Hi there, Chef here with a video on monopsony power. Now, what's meant by a firm having monopsony power in a market or an industry? Well, a monopsony is where a business has buying or bargaining power with suppliers in one or more markets. And this means that a business can exploit that bargaining power with a supplier, perhaps to negotiate lower prices. That means that the cost of their inputs will come down, which in theory increases their profit margins. Crucially, monopsony power can happen in both product markets, that's the markets for goods and services, some examples coming up in a second, and also the labour market. Now we have a separate video on monopsony in the labour market. So this is a concept that's become increasingly important in recent years. What about examples of monopsony power? Well, good examples might include the supermarkets buying off farmers, the National Health Service buying drugs off pharmaceutical companies, the energy generators and British Sugar buying their component parts from suppliers. Amazon has huge monopsony power over particularly small businesses trying to sell on the Amazon platforms. And food manufacturers buying ingredients, for example, to mass process food. So here's a good example of monopsony power. <coughs> Tesco demanding supplier price cuts. Uh, they're facing competition from the likes of Aldi, Asda and Lidl. So they've tried to preempt this by putting pressure on suppliers to cut costs. Uh, here's another monopsony story. It seems that the deal that Aldi have with Haribo is probably better than the one that Tesco have with, with Haribo. And there, as a result, Tesco is trying to renegotiate their deal. They're trying to exert monopsony power over the iconic German sweet manufacturer. And this story from the digital economy highlights the market power or the monopsony power of Google and Apple, two of the world's digital giants. So several of the world's leading publishers are pressing the tech giants for a greater share of the revenues that their content generates via the App Store, for example. So clearly, Google and Apple have considerable monopsony power in the market for content. So well, how can we use some analysis to show how monopsony power can affect price, output and profits? Well, well some of the benefits, let's think first of all some of the consequences of monopsony power. By the way, don't, don't be afraid to use concepts from your year 12 studies in economics. An example here will be producer surplus. So monopsony power in theory allows firms to achieve purchasing economies of scale, which reduces their long run average cost. And that can bring about higher supernormal profits and ultimately increase returns for shareholders. That extra profit, producer surplus, might then be used to fund capital investment or research and development to improve dynamic efficiency. So here's a strong analysis diagram that you can use. The initial profit maximising output is Q1 with price P1 charge per unit. And uh, bargaining power with suppliers helps to bring down unit costs from MC to MC2 and AC2. So the equilibrium output expands to Q2 and the price falls from P1 to P2. And as a result, total super normal profit goes up. So monopsony power is a way of bringing down costs for firms, which in turn might lead to lower prices and higher supernormal profit. So in what ways might monopsony power improve consumer welfare? Well, consumers might gain from lower prices. Supermarkets, for example, might be able to negotiate better prices from manufacturers, and they may decide to pass on those to consumers, which increases their real incomes and consumer surplus. The NHS, for example, might use their bargaining power to cut the price that they pay for drugs used in routine treatments. And cost savings then allow more people to be treated within a given and certainly scarce NHS budget. So here's the consumer surplus argument. There was the initial consumer surplus ABC. With lower costs, the price falls from B to D. Uh, output expands from Q1 to Q2. So a fall in price will increase consumer surplus by B, C, E, D. However, monopsony power has some damaging consequences as well. Businesses may use their buying power to squeeze lower prices out of suppliers, which then lowers the profitability of firms in the industry supply chain and might cause falling incomes for those people employed. So we've seen, for example, in recent times, controversy over the price of milk. The fact that many farmers, often independent farmers, are getting a price for milk from the supermarkets, which doesn't even cover the average cost of production.
Egg producers have claimed that supermarkets are not paying a fair price, leading to economic losses. And if farmers and growers leave the industry, then consumers might be faced with less choice and or higher prices in the future. And as you'll see in our video on monopsy in the labour market, monopsy in the employers might use their power in the labour market to drive down wages, which can then impact on real incomes and living standards. Well, what policies and different interventions might be used to control the exploitation of monopsy power? Well, there's lots of different policies that could be used in theory. One is to create new regulatory bodies, such as the grocery adjudicator. Competition policy might block some mergers and takeovers, for example in the supermarket sector. The government might try to encourage producer cooperatives to expand as a counterbalance to monopsony powers and impose tougher laws and industry standards on the ethical sourcing of supplies. And of course technology may be a way for suppliers to sell themselves direct to consumers and take out the retail middle person. The UK's Grocery Code Adjudicator, or GCA, applies to all grocers with a turnover of more than £1 billion and they can levy penalties of up to 1% of turnover if they find and find a um, post-investigation disputes between purchasers and suppliers. Uh, a lovely example of regulation here with the pub code regulator deeming that Heineken had abused their market power to force the firm's pub division to stock a disproportionate quantity of their drinks. And that, dis that limited the ability of landlords to choose which beers and ciders to stock. Uh, in strengthening the pump payment code, the UK government is striking at the monopsony power of larger firms when it comes to paying smaller suppliers. And here's a good example of a producer cooperative owned by nearly 10,000 farmers across Europe. Uh, Arla Foods is home to household brands such as Costello, Cravendale Milk and Lurpak. Producer cooperatives are better able to provide a better price for their farmers. So producer cooperatives are really quite important, actually. They're better able to negotiate prices with transnational corporations. They might use higher extra price and profit to increase investment in processing and branding. Uh, this is a good example from Ethiopia, the Aroma Coffee Farmers Union, which is a smallholder coffee growers cooperative established, gosh, nearly 25 years ago. And there are now many cooperatives, particularly in the African nations, which try to get better prices for their farmers. Uh, we've got some exercises on the, on Monopsony Power, which you'll be able to use if you download the video on this page. OK, thank you for joining in this video on Monopsony Power.